We as sneakerheads tend to attribute a great deal of Air Jordan's success to either Tinker Hatfield's expertise as a designer or Michael Jordan's legendary skill as a player. But there is another ingredient in Jordan Brand's secret sauce that bears acknowledgement. That secret ingredient is the relationship with the player. There are plenty of stories of brands signing deals with star players then neglecting their input and designing a shoe that the player doesn't really vibe with at all. If you watched our videos on the Jordan 2 and the Jordan 3, then you know that MJ was not happy with his relationship with Nike after the relative failure of the Air Jordan 2. He was literally ready to sign with another brand. Tinker Hatfield saved that relationship and secured MJ's partnership not by simply designing a dope successor to the Air Jordan 2, but by showing MJ that his voice was going to be heard, that his influence would impact the design of his own signature sneakers. Almost a decade later, Tinker Hatfield would design his 10th Air Jordan sneaker, and this one is a landmark that shows us the potential of a genuine collaboration with the athlete. Today, we're taking a look at the history of the Air Jordan 12. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you are a regular viewer of the show, well then welcome back. Well, we'd love to have you tune in. And if this is your first time, well then you've come to the right place because on this channel, my brother Nacho and I break down all things in sneaker history and sneaker culture. And I think you're really gonna enjoy it. All right guys, with that out of the way, let's get into the history of the Air Jordan 12. The core design of the Air Jordan 12 was based largely on two things. The rays of the Japanese rising sun flag gave us the stitch paneling pattern on the upper and a particular 19th century woman's dress shoe called the Nishoki inspired the stacked heel look and the overall shape of the silhouette. This is what I'm talking about with the trust between the designer and the athlete. How many male basketball players would be open to uh, their shoe being inspired by some dusty old uh, women's dress shoe? Not a lot. And this is what makes Tinker Hatfield's relationship with Michael Jordan very special. Jordan took no issue with the inspiration. After all, Tinker Hatfield had already drawn on Mike's love of luxury fashion and Italian dress shoes as inspiration for previous Jordan models. Around the time of the 12's release, Nike officially created the Jordan brand subdivision. And in addition to this being the last Jordan to come in a Nike box, we see some new branding styles on the sneaker itself signifying this change. The loop of the heel tap sported a Jumpman logo and extended down the length of the heel, reading Jordan. And in smaller text, quality inspired by the greatest player ever. On top of the tongue flew a Jumpman logo, and beneath it, it read TWO3 or 23. One final Jordan specific touch is a detailing above the midsole that read Jumpman. As for the technology of the shoe, the Jordan 12 carried an updated version of the carbon fiber heel shank that had been found in the Jordan 11. The 12 also contained a full zoom air unit, the first Jordan to ever have it. As with most Air Jordan models, an unforgettable moment in Michael Jordan's career infused itself into the identity of the Jordan 12. It was one colorway in particular that earned a unique title, the Flu Game 12s. During the 97 NBA playoffs, the Chicago Bulls and the Utah Jazz were tied 2-2, and on the day of the decisive Game 5, flu-like symptoms. Throughout the game, Mike was visibly staggering, dehydrated and exhausted, even having to be carried off the court once by teammate Scottie Pippen. But as we know, Michael rallied scoring a total of 38 points and overtaking Utah in the game's final half minute. Though MJ and his coaches would later state that the illness had actually been caused by food poisoning, the black varsity red colorway that MJ had been rocking during the game would forever be known as the Flu Game 12s. In 2009, a Jordan 12 retro officially named the Flu Game 12s released. Same general colorway as the OG black varsity reds, but these had a stamp on the heel. 97 for the year followed by the Flu logo, and then a 38 for the number of points that Jordan scored in that game. Overall, it was another impressive award-winning season for Michael Jordan. He made his 11th All-Star Game appearance, won his 9th NBA scoring title, was first team All-NBA, first team All-Defense, and won NBA Finals MVP. The one missing accolade this year was the award for regular season MVP, which he narrowly lost to Carl Malone. However, this fueled Michael's fire to prove that he was the true MVP by outscoring Malone in the finals. And of course, Mike led the Bulls to their fifth championship win. Another fun fact about the Jordan 12 is that during the season in 1997, the 12 was so loved that Jordan's teammates were rocking them too. Bill Weddington and Luck Longley wore 12s on the court and even Scottie Pippen would rock them over his own signature shoe. Launching in 96 and 97 and selling for $135, the Jordan 12 saw five OG colorways, the Taxi 12s, the white Varsity Red 12s, the Obsidians, the Black Varsity, also known as the Flu Games, and the Playoff 12s. As is tradition here on this channel, we're gonna be taking a look at some of our favorite and some of your favorite Jordan 12 colorways. 
The Air Jordan 12 wings is one of the dopest pairs if you ask me. Super classy gold detailing, a beautiful pattern showing through the translucent sole, but most importantly, the upper features black brush off leather that, over time, wears and reveals a pattern of gold wings underneath. In 2009, the Air Jordan 12 Rising Sun was released. Similar to the Jordan 11 model, it sported a patent leather mudguard instead of the standard reptile pattern leather of the 12, and the perforated sections of the stitched upper emulated more directly the actual Rising Sun flag. On launch, this version even had the Rising Sun flag on the insoles, but this proved to be controversial, and Nike delayed the release to replace the insoles. The Jordan 12 Retro Nubug is an interesting story. In 2003, Nike mailed out physical letters to members of Jumpman23.com, inviting them to visit a website where they'd be able to purchase a pack comprised of the Nubug 12s, a hat, and a hoodie. On release day, the sheer traffic of would-be buyers crashed the website, and it took days for Nike to sort out the issue and start selling the pack as intended. 2003 was definitely before my time, and I know there's some OG sneakerheads, and especially some OG uh, Jordan heads who, who remember this drop, and, and I'd love to hear your story if you guys were around when this happened. Leave it down in the comments below. As with many Air Jordan models, the 12 has found its way into the NFL. These Jordan 12 cleats have been worn on the field by Jordan brand signed NFL stars such as Des Bryant and Earl Thomas. As always, gotta mention the Dorenbecker. The 12's Dorenbecker Freestyle Black and Pink Blast was designed by the nine-year-old Carissa Navarro, a patient at Dorenbecker Children's Hospital who was born without kidneys. Carissa packed this custom design sneaker full of details as usual. This Dorenbecker needs a video of its own to really do it justice, as with most Dorenbecker Jordans. Or how about the Jordan 12 Low? I'm not sure how I feel about those. What do you guys feel about? Do I, I'm not, I'm just not a huge fan of any kind of low Jordans, except for the ones and sometimes the 11, but what do you guys think? Check out this monochromatic PSNY Jordan 12s with the suede upper. Or how about the Gamma Blue Retro? One of the most popular Jordan 12s of all time. Finally, two colorways of the Air Jordan 12 OVO were released in 2016. Sporting branding from Drake's clothing brand, October's very own, also known as OVO, this was Drake's second big sneaker release with Nike since he was appointed a Jordan brand ambassador in 2014. The iridescent pearl effect on the mudguard is pretty dope if you ask me. If you want to learn more about Jordans or just sneakers in general, actually, let's take, I'm going to make a playlist of just Jordan videos that we've done. So here's the playlist. Uh, you'll see it on the screen here momentarily of all the Jordan videos we've done. We've done Jordan 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, and by the time you're watching this, probably the seventh. So go ahead and click on that. Jordan, you know, so important to the culture. Click on that and I will see you over in those videos. Peace for now.